There we go. Okay. Well, um, some time ago, Elta asked me to make a costume for the river roading project. Um, the river roading is a road that uh, is a river that goes through um, Ilford and out of London, and um, the the tr river roading trust were um, trying to you know highlight their profile, so um, they wanted a textile project to highlight um, things that they were doing with the river. So uh, the, the process really, normally I don't, I don't design, but because this was uh, the project it was, I, I was designing. So what I did initially was I read up a little bit on the river roading, um, which turned out to be very similar to the river much closer to where I live. And um, there wasn't really a very tight brief about what the costume needed to be like. So it was mainly my own um, ideas. And so I thought probably what I would like to do is make, uh, after I'd seen the green, the, the, the potential of the green fabric, um, I thought what I'd like to do is a, an embodiment of the river. So the, the research I'd done uh, told me that the river had been industrial since the medieval, um, like the river Lee near where I live, and um, that it had many mills along it and all the rest of it, and, and really it was at its busiest in the medieval. So I thought that gave me the idea of maybe um, putting the, making the costume medieval, the embodiment of the river medieval. So. That's what I sort of uh, decided to do. So I knew that many different people were going to need to wear the costume. So I decided on um, a design that is authentically medieval, which is a sideless gown. Um, but that means that it's quite expandable. So lots of different people could wear it. Uh, so I... Um, went ahead with the idea of a sideless gown, I drew it out a little bit. Um, then I talked to people at Elta and we looked at some of the fabrics that had been donated and I picked a couple. There was, uh, so for the shift I picked a Georgette that has a snake print on it because one of the things we wanted to, what, that they wanted to um, highlight about the river roading was that road roading was that it has a lot of invasive species, some of which are snakes. So I thought that the snakes might be quite fun for the for the um, shift. So that's what we did. And there was also some quite shiny satin material that was quite a difficult shade of um, lime green. And I said, well. The weight of the fabric and the, the, the finish of the fabric is very nice. It's nice quality fabric. I'll take it away and see if I can do something with it. So I treated it with initially with bleach um, a little bit and it came out of the, the, the lime greenness came out a little bit. And then I um, used a technique that's used in theatre a lot, which is I put a load of dye in uh, quite a small container and I put all the fabric in the container and then that means that the, the dyes are taken up unevenly by the fabric and so you get this broken um, finish that you see here. So uh, it's actually quite subtle. I thought it was going to be a bit more dramatic to be honest but um, it came out, a lot of it sort of washed out so it came out quite subtle but I think it's it's quite mossy and river-like, so I was quite pleased with it. So I then cut the pattern uh, using a sort of general sort of size 14. I cut the pattern, made the shift. Um, then I started making the, the sideless gown <clears throat> and I used a, uh, a theatrical technique again. The, this, this fabric is actually quite a thin rayon that would have been made into probably dresses or blouses 
which is really not especially suitable for a costume. So I backed it on um, uh, cotton sateen, which would actually be curtain lining. Um, so it's all reused, so that like the the, the fabrics are all repurposed. Um, I then decided upon the. Um, I wanted the, the embodiment of the river, so that the, the to give it a more sort of watery quality, and to bring it up to date a little bit. I decided to do um, a trim uh, of plastics instead of it. In this period, trims were often for for winter garments were often in fur, and I had the idea of hooking bits of plastic that might be waste in a river onto um, rag camber, uh, rug canvas and then using that as a trimming as if it was fur. So that's what I did. I also used some hessian and different things just to give it a bit more, um, quite a lot more texture. You find with these things with costumes that you can pour loads and loads of texture and different things into it and it, it just soaks it all up. You want as much as you really, you, you have to keep piling it on. <laughs> so that's what I did. I also used side vents with, uh, uh, again, a waste fabric from, from Elta, which I thought looked quite foamy or like um, like water that might, might be if it's got sort of stuff on it um, to finish the, in order to give the skirt enough enough fullness because there wasn't the, the fabric wasn't really wide enough so um, that, that that's sort of like and it, it enhanced the the, uh, the the look as well and I cut it into points so that it it sort of like blends away into the into the floor um, then I started thinking about so it was pretty much made by then and then I thought well medieval costumes they're always decorated um, and they either have girdles, or they have usually have braid around the neck, and they quite often have girdles and things. And I thought, well, the girdle's probably not going to help us out because it will break up the dress and the idea of the wateriness and the fall. So I abandoned the idea of a girdle, but I thought I do want a braid-like effect on the neck. And Braids that are used for this and this are usually quite expensive and they're usually, um, and it's usually very difficult to get exactly the right kind. Um, and Sonia sort of said to me, oh look, we've had these, um, you know, sort of like quite narrow embroideries made into a, um, printed on fabric. And so I used that, I used the, just the, the narrow, sort of like strip that had been embroidered and then printed. I used that as if it was braid, um, and I put that on a background of, again, waste fabric that I happen to have at home, and in order to tie it in with the with the shift, I took strips of the georgette that were left over from the cut of the, there wasn't a lot left over, but there was a bit left over from the cut of the, the shift, usually medieval or, or, or traditional things there. They're pretty much zero waste cut, but there was a little bit from the sleeves, <coughs> and I cut those into strips and I plaited them, and I used that as braid. It looks a little bit like seaweed or flotsam and jetsam. I thought that looked quite good, and then right round the neck, I thought I want something a little bit more blingy, and I found in my work basket. I just found like a little little rose of tiny little seed pearls, which are a very watery, pearls are generally a very watery thing, so I thought it was a very appropriate, um, rather than gemstones or something like that, that we used in medieval and all. But um, uh, I thought pearls were sort of like, captured the watery, the watery nature of the project quite nicely. So 